and Joel, thank you so much for coming here to be with me today for the Tiny Sessions podcast. It's lovely to have you. Thank, thank you. you. Hi. Lovely Hello. Hi. Yeah. Um, so oh, literally. For... Oh, yeah, I know. It's so <laughs> nice. It's really cool. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know um, about you guys or hasn't had the pleasure of um, seeing you guys on Instagram, is there a little bit that you can tell us a little bit of information about yourselves, a little background story about you guys? Do you wanna? Do you wanna yeah. start? Yeah. Well, I'm Indy, and I live full time in our self converted Van Luna with Joel. Yeah. And we have been full timers only for three months now. Yeah. So we just finished nice. our conversion, and we just started living tiny. And before that, we've been traveling. Uh, we were nomads for one and a half year, and then Corona hit, and then we had to rush home and didn't know what we were gonna do. So we decided to convert a van and get kind of a base that we can still travel. Yeah. Ah, uh, so yeah. The so whole idea the, of van life. Do the two. The idea is that you can still do the traveling. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, both of us have been traveling for quite some time, even before we met, um, which is soon to be three years ago. Um, but before oh, that, we've both been lit. traveling on and off for about five, six, seven years. Yeah. So I think both of us have been missing that, like, to have that... Uh, base base or home. sense of security in a home but we do not want to stop traveling yeah so hence the van and we also since we started converting our van we run our instagram account that's ah, called on yeah. the free site yeah. yeah uh with a website with a bit of tips and tricks about tiny living also like stuff we use in our kitchen and stuff and we have a fun tiktok and we have a website <laughs> oh yeah you got and we're trying to <laughs> yes we're on tiktok we're on TikTok. um but yeah we're kind of trying to pursue a life more minimalistic and yeah i love have fun that. content creating yeah. yeah definitely i love that and you guys said about um sort of life pre van life that you used to do a lot of traveling um what sort of places did you guys go to well uh, you, together or before we met because this like uh, whole... is there a favorite place <laughs> before you met and then something that you guys have done together that really sticks out yeah so i went to high school in kenya a boarding oh. school and after that i used to go back every year kite surfing and then oh, eventually cool. i started working as a kite surfing instructor so kenya is my favorite country before i met joel no <laughs> now then... i'm your favorite country now you're my favorite country <laughs> And, and uh, yeah, I think I've been I've been backpacking quite a lot. Um, I've been around Southeast Asia, as most people from Sweden have been at one point in life. <laughs> ah, no. uh, so I've been around there about two, three times. Um, I backpacked Europe. I did um, I did India for six months, which was amazing. And it was actually actually just after I came back from India that me and Indy met. Oh, um, nice. And then we started dating. And after about three months, Indy told me, like, yo, boy, I'm going to Kenya. You better save up. Oh, and nice. <laughs> so I did. So and you did. <laughs> off we went. And we yeah. stayed three months in uh, Diani on the coast of Kenya. Oh, so we had just been together for around three months before, when we headed off on our world round trip. So we yeah. went to Kenya. Thailand. Thailand, Australia, a little country called Tonga that's in the middle of oh, the yeah, South I've Pacific. heard of Tonga. Yeah, I've heard of Tonga. Uh, and then Australia again. Oh, Fiji in between. Fiji well. in between. And then all of a sudden COVID happened. Yeah. So it's oh. one and a half year we were crossing borders. Yep. That's amazing. So you guys met and then pretty like kind of straight into it. You were like, <laughs> I'm going traveling. This is me. I'm off to Kenya. Are you coming? And then you guys then did this amazing travel trip together. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm guess I think that both of us realized when we met the first moment that we met, we're we're gonna be together. Yeah. Yeah. It was not the There's first no, night. No question about it was it. one evening, and we were like, "This is this. This is oh, it." Oh, nice. So we got oh, together a month that. after, and then one night stand success. You don't have to say that. <laughs> But you can edit out. <laughs> I can clip that bit out. <laughs> I love it. Oh, no, that's really nice though, because the fact that, like, I think even 
like with van life and things like that people do kind of go like oh how does it work living as a couple in a small space and and then other the, the flip side of it is that if someone's single they're like how do I meet someone and that I always hear that exact sentence of when I've met them I know that they're they're the right one or at some stage they all people always say I know that they were the right one and it's really really nice to hear that that you just you just know it's it must be really bizarre it's like when it comes to it you just know yeah yeah we just was, knew yeah but yeah we, we knew it just took us a, a few weeks to sort things out yeah but we knew that we were going to be together and that was why it was so easy to start traveling as fast as possible because we got along so well and then as well as living tiny and moving into a van together and like learning how to adapt in a relationship on six square meters yeah where communication is key yeah Yeah. but we're so used to being like together yeah so since we we were traveling both of us together yeah it was just us yeah i think You've got i don't think we've ever been apart longer than a week a week yeah oh that's cool do you find <laughs> that so if you're in a small space do you find that you have to like do an activity that's like your own activity switch off or are you both the sort of people where actually you just sort of mold into each other's like creative creativeness i think it's both we mold uh, into each other, but also we have been lucky in the last year that we are working as caretakers for people with mental and physical disabilities. Oh, amazing. And we work 24 hour shifts. So sometimes oh, okay. one of us gets a, a night off from each other. Yeah. So it works really uh, yeah. well. And on that evening, you can kind of do your own thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But also, I mean, even this is square meter, six square meters, like our house, we also have the cab area. Right. Jump in there, close the door, get their own space. Nice. And that's needed sometimes. Yeah. yeah. If you want to just sort of read a book. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's part it's part of life, isn't it? We all yeah. need yeah, our exactly. own space. You can be the most chattiest of persons. Sometimes you just need to switch off and just have a bit of you time or read a book or, yeah. or something yeah. for yourself. So. And if we ever do, like there's no problem in me or in the saying to each other like look I, I i need some space and i'm tired of you i'm, tired yeah. of you. I'm gonna sit in the front <laughs> yeah i think that's great and i think like you guys said as well um communication is really key like yeah. so yeah. so key um i think if you could just communicate and just say yeah like you said just then oh i'm just gonna go up to the front I'm just gonna go read a book have a bit of space and then you're like yeah, yeah cool and you know no one ever knows they never have to doubt yourself you don't have to think oh have I done something because even like the strongest of relationships you could go is that are we okay <laughs> is everything okay yeah exactly and it's nice it's just communication like you say it's just the, yeah the perfect thing. there's like these these small things that are not usual to a relationship if you live in an apartment but if you live this small it's just a part of moving around in the van we constantly yeah. have to if someone's moving, because we built our kitchen so small that we only have 50 centimeters in the middle, meaning oh, that we have to squeeze apart each other, like squeeze uh, by side each other. Yeah, 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 that's it. To be yeah. able to move from one side of the van to the other. Yeah. So we can't even walk without communicating on how to walk. Yeah. In our home. But yeah, luckily we both work in restaurants and uh, there's a thing called backs or back. Yeah, backs. So, you, so whenever you, you're working, I, I was in a bar. Yeah. So if I needed something, I would just tap someone on the shoulder and said back. And that person ah. knows that I'm going to pass or yeah. move. Oh, so, that's good. Do you, yeah. do you use that as well? Did you use that at the start? Yeah, now yeah, yeah, yeah all the time. Do you still use it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, amazing. That's we have a lot of keywords, nice. actually. Yeah. Or we have like short words, like... Um, make the morning that means that we need to make the bed without having to like discuss when or why just just make the bed yeah and then the back. so we have we have like short cuts what's it called keywords, keywords. so we can just say yeah. one word yeah and we'll know what the other person wants <clears throat> to do or change or anything That's so, so we, have, good. we have our own vocabulary yeah. to be able to communicate with each other in such a tiny space I love that. I love that. I've never heard of that. Having keywords, that makes perfect sense. Because like you say, you, you just go like, you say your keyword for making the bed and 
you've done it and there's no arguments it's just yep yep so do that now yep. and then we're on to the next and you can enjoy your day or you're off to work or, or whatever you're doing yeah really also fun. another fun thing that we started with recently was we made up a person that we can blame stuff on oh yeah <laughs> like if someone forgets to fill the water oh no that was karen yeah that was karen, karen and then we it. don't have to feel like no one someone's taking blame the blame for that. Yeah. yeah yeah we'll just yeah. blame karen yeah. Kind of takes the aggression out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you don't feel attacked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Instead, it's you just... can unify against someone yeah. else. Yes, I'd be like, "Why didn't you turn the gas off?" Yeah. Oh, yeah, Karen. yeah. oh why? Karen needs Karen. to start turning the gas <laughs> yeah. on. off. I. That's really. That's so cool. Why don't people think of that? I think that's great because that is <laughs> that is like a. I think it is a thing. Even workplaces as well, and like with you guys in any small space, or even just a, a general sort of uh, modern uh, books and water house. Like yeah. the fact that yeah. you've got a, those keywords and you've got that thing of. I think people are so used to blaming someone and then it starts to eat and it starts yeah. to exactly, And if yeah. you just have that thing where you say, for example, oh, that's Karen's fault. She yeah. did that, never mind, sort of thing. It just lifts it a bit, doesn't it? It just it passes over it. and in yeah. such a small space, you need really need like there's so much stuff that you need to have everything in its right place all the time. Yeah. And Karen. She's very present constantly. <laughs> <Yeah. in life. laughs> His little pink cushion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. So um with the van build itself, um, how how did that come about? Did you guys take on certain roles with the van build or did you build it together? Um, was there things that you really wanted in the van build process? Um well, I think we, we started off building quite a lot together and trying to do as much as possible together. But also we were working like 20 hour shifts. So oh, sometimes God. one person was at work at 20 hours and another person was working uh, with the van. And uh, I don't know, eventually kind of just transcended into indie found building a lot more enjoyable than I did. And she was better in than me at um, solving the problems. Yeah. So she was kind of like, so we decided the that carpenter. We decided that Joel's going to take on more work, and in that way, I can build on the van because yeah. I enjoyed building on the van yeah. more than yeah. Joel enjoyed it. Yeah. So we kind of have to play it on play on each other's strength there. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. I did most of the build in the finishing, like when we we helped each other out with the whole installation part. I think until, and the floor and the roof. Yeah. But then all the, the interior the part. interiors is yeah. built by me. Man, no. you know, when it comes to math and there's a lot of angles, it just, and Joel's, it doesn't work like for in me. A, in, a van, <laughs> in a van, you can't measure stuff properly. You're just going to have to build from the floor because yes. everything's going to be crooked. Yes. All the side's going to be crooked. Yeah. And Joel <laughs> wants everything perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so it just, does, it just doesn't work. <laughs> I've literally, I've been using like, what do you call it? The leveler? The, the leveler. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, like. You want it and our really van was level. parked crooked. Oh, no. So using a leveler, <laughs> so it was impossible for me to get everything straight, and it was just yeah. eating on me. Yeah, I I couldn't <laughs> let it go. And oh, I love it. Now we call me the the measurements yeah, king. Yeah, the measurements king. <laughs> he, he needs to measure. If you ever need those sort of measurements, you know where to go. <laughs> exactly. The van building, it's good to just wing it a little bit. Yeah. Definitely. I completely understand that with um, building the Stitcher show home that um, everything is not not level at all. Like yeah. we were putting in walls in, in the van and like to cut the sides, you felt like you were going exaggerating like this <laughs> because yeah. I've got cladding all down the side and the cladding isn't straight. It just starts going like that all the way down. And yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's a whole different way of fitting things, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> So yeah. in your space, what sort of things have you got? Have you got a fixed bed or pull-out bed or? It's a convertible sofa. Uh, nice. It's a U-shaped U sofa that yeah, turns yeah. into a yeah. queen-size bed. Yeah. So in our whole layer, we can just go over the van a little bit. We got yeah. a Mercedes Sprinter. It's yeah. seven meters on the outside, 430 on the inside. So it's quite large. It's one of the biggest vans. Yeah. And so we be we have been able to fit a convertible bed because we want to be able to have friends over. 
it's U-shaped. Yeah. And then we have our cabinets on each side of the bed where we have a wardrobe each. Okay. And then yeah. we have a shower. Nice. But the shower flips from a countertop so we can cook and then we can like flip it up and have a shower inside. Oh, cool. Not so you've got a countertop yet. there as well. Yeah. Ah. It's not finished yet, but okay. it's going to be a whole shower there. Yeah. We don't and have then, any boiler yet, so we find yeah. it like pretty pointless to have cold showers. Yeah, so we didn't build oh, yeah. a shower yet, but like <laughs> we have the space for it. And then we have a fairly large kitchen that's from Ikea and we have a bulkhead door so we'll be able to close from our cabin area to the to yep. the living area for no. safety reasons yeah so that's, that's kind of the cool. whole van oh that's yeah. really cool so um with the kitchen you mentioned that you got your kitchen units from Ikea which is really cool so yeah. you just have to sort of just tweak them to be able to fit against the, back the backs side of yeah the... we cut the backs to be able to fit the, yeah. um, the frame of the well, the, the body of the van, yeah. but also our <clears throat> cabinets are just the fronts are from Ikea, but we oh, built I the see. cabinets. Oh, so yeah. everything nice. will be like yeah. unanimous and look clean, yeah, yeah, yeah. but be a bit less weight. Yeah, that's really cool. And I think that's a really good tip for people as well, who sometimes people really want to sort of renovate a, a tiny space or a van space. And they're really daunted by it and sometimes the costs of hiring out a carpenter and things and we've got loads of access to resources that we can make things and I think that's a really good tip of the fronts of doors because yeah they're they're really hard like to get straight on the doors is really really hard so that's a really really good tip on that I love that yeah Um, and with the shower did did you have sort of a discussion of do we need a shower? Do we want a shower? And any worries of things like uh, leaking and things like that? Or, or was it the case of, no, we'll be fine. Let's go for it. I think we can, uh, We needed a room to be able to hang our wetsuits in anyway. So we yeah. can, uh, we, we, I don't, what, what do you call it? Like a, we a, wanted what, a, a safe room. Like a wet room to wet be able room, to hang yeah. wet clothes. Yeah. yeah to be able to like shower off or because we're kite surfers to be able to shower off our kite surfing gear um so it was never really a question about it it was just but it wasn't a hygiene question like we didn't get a shower because we wanted to keep it clean no no, it was for a whole other reason we want to keep the gear clean (laughs) we want to keep the gear clean yeah which Uh, is just as important (laughs) yeah that's really cool it wasn't to do Mm. with the hygiene side of it it was it was the sort of the practical side of it for keeping your gear clean which really yeah happened. but we also realized when we bought the tap um for the sink we can yeah. actually turn it around 180 oh. and it pulls out so we can actually shower just outside, outside from the sink pulls oh, cool. out like 50 centimeters and um, so we've got two options shower inside options, yeah. or we can pull the sink up around nice. or like the tap around and shower outside yeah that's cool that's cool and like and just easy things with, as well like if you want to wash your hair or or even if you can yeah. you can always add an attachment on and sort of hose down your gear as well so yeah, it's nice exactly. to have the two options as well yeah that's really cool um so um i know that uh india you're quite an advocate for um sort of mental health awareness um and um you guys have expressed um uh an interest in the endometriosis which yeah is really really interesting I've heard of it um but I think I know for myself I don't know enough about it and I think there's probably a lot of people that don't even know what it is so would you be able to chat to us a little bit about that yeah of course so endometriosis we'll just start with what it is from the beginning endometriosis is a uh, disease that females get like women get in their uterus yeah Endometri- endometriosis means endometrium and endometrium is the uterus lining inside of your uterus so when you get your period um that kind of um i have never explained this in english that kind of drops that's down okay. and that's the endometrium right yeah, so yeah when you have endometriosis this uterus lining grows on other parts of your body yeah. and it acts as if it's in your uterus so when you're having your period cycle it starts bleeding on different parts of your body yeah. and that causes pain yeah like a lot of pain and it also causes um scar tissue in okay. your stomach so i have i got diagnosed with endometriosis last fall in october i yeah. had an operation uh, keyhole surgery when they went 
and inside of my uterus and my stomach and looked around and saw if they could find an endometriosis and they did and they kind of look cut, cut that away okay. but then at the same time it, it's constantly growing I see so, so it keeps growing it keeps growing if you have a cycle because every month like a normal cycle you yeah. get your period yeah and in that way you get the uterus lining so it grows every month oh. so like endometriosis is a little bit of fact about it is that one out of 10 women have it okay but not a lot of people do know that they have it because that's why I'm a bit of an advocate for it as well because we are told as women that it's supposed to be painful to have your period yeah like you get cramps it's supposed yeah. to be painful but it's not supposed to be painful no it's supposed to be uncomfortable yeah and annoying not painful yeah you're not supposed to be able to skip work or skip school if yeah if that happens something is seriously wrong and you yeah. need to go see a doctor definitely and do you find um do you know if it sort of happens from any age or does it tend to happen at sort of a certain age bracket more so or no so it happens from an age like okay. the moment that you start getting your period so I got it when I was 16 when I got my period oh, okay but the only medication for endometriosis is hormones birth control pills I because see. you take away the cycle and you take yeah. away the problem I see I see kind of yeah and I went on uh, hormones or birth control pills when I was 16 so I didn't it didn't evolve for me until I quit with birth control pills a few years back yeah. so for me it's evolved in when I was grown up when I was like 24 yeah that's when I started like getting real bad pains and then like the symptoms for endometriosis is um, bad pains when you're when you go to the bathroom like bad pains when you're having sex yeah when during your cycle when you eat and this can also grow everywhere in your body so you can have like problems with nosebleeds oh, and okay endometriosis. so what i'm trying to do with endometriosis is literally just bring awareness to that young girls and females do not need to have a painful period and if they do they can go and seek help and that's kind of one of why I talk about it so much because people need to know that as a female disease is not really well talked about and yeah. it needs to be <clears throat> talked about yeah definitely and I think I think people like you were saying when you have your period people tend to think oh I can get cramps like or maybe this is painful and especially if it's at the start and you're 16 you don't really know what you what you're meant to be expecting because it is different for everyone some people might be lucky some people might have really bad cramps um it can vary for everyone so knowing those symptoms and and sort of talking about them I think is really yeah. really key and really interesting um and as someone who has has um, endometriosis um, currently do you find that there are certain things that help you like do you find that getting like a hot water bottle or anything like that are there certain things that just help soothe the pain or is it quite like a dull dull pain so I'm on the I have birth control pill now well yeah. I have hormones because that's what brings the cycle weight but I still get pains because yeah. I, it's already evolved in my body um painkillers pain doesn't work for me at all it's like I'm eating candy yeah I, I don't even feel it um well not really but like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't feel painkillers I know I don't really um, agree with them either <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but for me I have um a device called a TN TENS machine tense, tense yeah. machine oh yeah it, I've heard of tense machine it's super cheap it's like 50 bucks yeah euros 500 yeah, Swedish. around 40 quids and yeah. it is for, they use it on um, on like when you're having a sore neck yeah. and you can use that and put it on your uter or put it on your yeah, lower stomach yeah and start it and it gives away electromagnetic fields yeah, it yeah. Gives away pulses yeah. and it takes away so it stimulates the nerves and takes away the pain oh, so that's like a really good tip for anybody having hard period pains is to yeah. get one of if it works for you it doesn't work for everybody but it works for some that's really and then also just accepting the pain and realizing that my day is finished like yeah. take a day 
stay in bed, take painkillers, take care of yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's not worth pushing through because yeah. that's just going to stress you. Yeah. Sort of say to yourself, it's okay. This is yeah. what I have. It's okay to take some time out. Did you find that um, it sounded like it took a while for for it to actually be diagnosed? Did you find that you were trying to get a diagnosis before and people were just saying, oh, it's just how it is with your period? Or or did you find that there were doctors who were like, oh, because um, I know it's, it's, it is hard for doctors. Um, they see so many people. So it's tricky to know what's what and and sort of check things properly it's not their fault but did you find it took a while so I was really lucky but at the same time like when I when I went into a doctor when I was 16 they could have told me about different diseases but they just went oh you have painful periods here you have some birth control pills yeah yeah so but when I actually started researching it was just two years ago I started researching on what what could be wrong with me yeah um that's when I kind of had to find it myself and I went into the doctor and I said I think I have endometriosis right look up yeah so I was lucky enough to be well educated in this and know friends that have it to be able to tell my doctors to look it up but I did actually a, because I, when I was in high school, I did a paper on this. Oh, cool. And I asked 80 people with endometriosis if they felt that they were like helped by the healthcare workers. Yeah. And I think we ended up at like 20% actually got help. And like it yeah. took around seven years to get diagnosed because they were so mistreated and not yeah. trusted. And just, it's just period pain, you know, that yeah. saying, oh it's supposed to be painful um so I was lucky enough to get diagnosed super fast yeah. but I know a lot of people isn't and that's because people just doesn't know it exists and the only yeah. way to get diagnosed is to have the keyhole surgery is to have surgery right I see or an MR, MR yeah. but if you have an MR you have to have really like typical endometriosis it's bleeding. Easy to, to be detected yeah so it's super hard to be detected it's not ser- researched at all right and barely any medication for it and not a lot of people know about it not even doctors yeah. but there's still oh i see one out of ten have it i see it's so interesting i think there's a lot of things out there isn't there that people don't know enough about um i'm fortunate to have some amazing friends who who sort of are advocates for other diseases and things like yeah. that and and it's so important because you know there's things that both guys and girls get and and it's it's one of those things where unless we know what the symptoms are we don't then have the confidence to go up to a doctor and go actually I think it might be this because yeah. in England I don't know if it's the same with you guys in Sweden but I um when I phone up my um GP they always say to me what do you think they always say to me what do oh, really? you think oh they yeah. do not say that in <laughs> they say to me what do you think and I always want to go this is why I'm calling you <laughs> I mean they don't all say that but I have had it and they say what do you think and I'm like well I'm asking you <laughs> well, well, this is why I'm asking a professional yeah. like, so I think I think maybe it's really important do you think it's important for people that if they feel like they've said they feel like they have symptoms of um, endometriosis and and they've been told oh it you know see how it goes or or rightly been told to wait a little bit and see what happens um do you think that it's good for people to just say actually no like I think it really could be that I'll I'll go and book another appointment I think it's important yeah. maybe to not be worried to book another appointment and and just yeah no no push it again push it it's your health it's your pain yeah and it's valid so push it definitely beautiful I love that I think it's so important to talk about so thank you for opening up about that as well um so going um, back to van life itself and your lifestyle so you've only recently gone full-time uh with the van um how are you funding this lifestyle? Um, I know that you said about that you've got your jobs. Um, uh, the, was it the caretaker jobs, was it? Yeah. yeah, so you've got your caretaker jobs. So um, you guys have said about how you really want to go traveling and things like that. So have you got plans to travel? And if you do, 
what how you think of funding that lifestyle yeah uh, so we work at uh, as caregivers Care or caretakers. caretakers and uh, that's something that's been giving us a fair amount of freedom as well because we work 24 hour shifts and we usually off for at least 24 hours and you work maybe three shifts a week and so then you're off like three four days so it creates a lot of time and we don't really have any fundings what no you continue Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, you can just. Uh, that out. Anyway, no, I was that. looking at you like, did she freeze again? Because you had the same face. I was, like, <laughs> I was intently well, did, did she... listening away. I was like, oh, this is really interesting. <laughs> uh, so, apart from that, we don't make money any other way no. just yet. But I think the dream is to be able to do something with our social media. Yeah. and our website and our photography or maybe a small business yeah. i don't know something fun so sorry like something extremely oh, exciting cool. so maybe, maybe to run from the van product. yeah that you can make we're brainstorming van. a lot yeah yeah we're constantly brainstorming about what we can do and what we want to bring to this world and what's missing and what kind yeah. of what we want to do yeah. but at the same time like we are fine with if we want to start traveling when the world starts opening up yeah like we're happy to do seasonal jobs yeah. and that's kind of what our main plan is to get around yeah we have never been huge career people yeah we're we kind of just enjoy taking it as it goes and if yeah. if that yeah. means like in australia taking care of cows for three months that's yeah, fine cool. that's what we're doing then that's cool or if it means busting tables in a bar somewhere that that means we're doing that because yeah. it keeps us on the road and it keeps yeah. us being able to travel so for us, an income is not the essential. It's yeah. the freedom of traveling. And it's, I guess it's about having enough to be able to, yeah, I like <laughs> that. I think it's about um, having enough, maybe for you guys, it's just about having enough to just pay your food, pay your gas. Yeah. And just get to the next destination. Pay, yeah, get to, yeah, get to your next destination. I think, do you find that if you do seasonal work, do you find that you do your seasonal work? So say, for example, a job that's for three months and then do you then travel for three months or do you have the idea that you just keep working as you're going along? Because um, some people do, some people do a season, have a little break and then have another season lined up and then others do just keep keep going through. Yeah, so I think we've been doing both uh, and I've been doing both personally as well. Yeah. Like if I do a snowboard season, it's usually for yeah five six months and then yeah. you go somewhere somewhere else for a few months yeah, and yeah. then you start the next season yeah but our plan now is but our plan now is to basically just work our way around like yeah. we did uh before we came back during the pandemic uh, we worked in kenya yeah we worked in uh, australia we worked in tonga yeah. so it was just continually working and traveling at the same yeah. time I mean, at the moment, we're funding the lifestyle with being location based and just traveling on yeah. the weekend. So when yeah. we're off, yeah. and that's completely easy as well. Like if if someone does want to pursue van life or live this kind of life, but still want to keep their job, it's yeah. fully possible. Yeah. Like Definitely. you can stay in one place and then travel on the weekends. But for us, our dream dream job would be able to switch jobs. Yeah. Constantly yeah. and move around because yeah. that's exciting as well. Yeah. yeah I mean Caretaker is a new, a new career for us, so to yeah. say. Like, I, I did it a bit before when I was like 18, 19. Yeah. But that was like 10 years ago. And Indy, you worked with elderly people. Yeah. But oh, nice. We, we worked in bars for almost 10 years. So it's also kind of nice for the change. Yeah. And I think the seasonal work gives that as well. You get to try a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In different fields. And meet so many different people as well, don't you? you get to meet a lot exactly. of different yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Learn different things, learn different skills, new skills that you can then apply to the next. I think sometimes I've been told with my CV that I've got loads of skills on there. And I've never, it's never clicked until us chatting that maybe someone out there who has a variety of skills on their CV, actually with something like doing the work that you guys are talking about and seasonal work and things like that, maybe that's where you can feel like oh actually i've got all the skills that apply to yeah. those sort of jobs more yeah, easily exactly. um instead of trying to filter into different jobs that that are very specific 
um yeah they sort of tend to want people who have got a lot of skill set yeah apply sort of more well-rounded don't they yeah. yeah i think we applied to how many different jobs when we were going to australia oh i applied to a oh, hundred no. jobs yeah. just send it out and yeah. eventually we, we got found the guy that wanted us to work on his farm yeah, yeah. We like perfect and it was great that. it was such an experience uh, yeah never done anything like it and probably never going to do it again <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes it's it's hard work some of them are really hard work aren't they yeah it's really good and like you say you've got an experience from it as well um so on um instagram i always like to ask the community some questions um and there's one that i've picked out and it's come from uh i believe it's actually one of your followers called aim park creative um Ooh, and they have and asked, oh yeah that's it dorian oh he's so lovely they're lovely their space is really cool as well um like, so what was that sorry no it's just I, I get a flashback from us talking about nothing being straight and oh. then i look at them building the van and it is oh, like <laughs> And Andorian's van is beautiful. It is. Everything yeah. is perfectly in line. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I want to be them. Oh, I love that. Well, I know that he said that they really like you and they want to be you. So oh, <laughs> maybe you guys nice. can connect and meet up. <laughs> um, so their question is, what is a new van life related habit or task that you guys love and what's one that you dislike? Oh, that was Should super we do one hard. Each or together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You start. Uh, okay, a habit that I don't love is... Oh, hmm. It's hard, isn't it? I was going to say, okay, so, <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, hard. <laughs> no, I think this is just a habit uh, for me because once we go to bed sometimes uh we talked about having your own space yeah uh, going to sleep kind of gives you that as well because you get your side of the bed and you can kind of zone out a little bit yeah 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 and i love that yeah. but i don't take the opportunity to do it in a good way because i always end up scrolling on my phone and yeah for a couple of hours before i go to bed instead of doing what indy does because she usually puts on an audiobook or yeah, something yeah 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 and that's a habit that I yeah, do because like. you don't get your space as much to like sit and watch YouTube, so you do it when you go to bed. Yeah, that's when you, you get like your you space. should utilize that moment more with like an audiobook or podcast. Yeah, because it's also it's but pointless it's stuff. Space. I'm just scrolling through meaningless. Yeah. yeah information so that i don't need. It's too easy, isn't it? You just keep yeah. too easy. Yeah, it's literally too just easy. too easy. <laughs> but sometimes it's very like. Sometimes it's just what I need as well. So. Yeah, because you need that kind of space by, by yourself because you're so constantly in each other's space that you need to. Yeah. But at the same time, definitely takes a lot of time. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> so, so that's kind of both of them. So you like that you have that habit of going into bed and you've got like you like you say you've got that little routine you've got your own side of each each other's bedside things like that but the dislike is that not always wanting to sort of be connected to your phone and making a bit more more yeah. use of that time I, yeah i i think i i can um i can go with that one as well i think you i can relate with that one I yeah i need to make i think a lot of people can i think it's too easy at night time sometimes i get into habit where i think oh i'll reply to people now because this is the chance that i've got to reply to yeah. people or friends throughout the day and it's so it's such a bad habit you do need to just yeah. off in other ways um and how I'm, about yourself indy so a habit that i well well it's not a habit, habit or a task so what i really realized that i dislike about van life is dishes oh my oh, god yeah I <laughs> constantly i'm one of those people that i want to keep it clean yeah i want everything to be in the right place and being like that being having that mindset at home you can put it in the wash and you still have a completely clean kitchen yeah but being everything so tiny here that you have to do the dishes straight away but that meaning that you're constantly doing dishes yeah so you feel like every, you're always doing the dishes every hour yeah. of the day you're constantly doing dishes because it takes a lot of time to do dishes because you have yeah. to save, save in water yeah so i realized how much uh, of van life actually takes to just keeping the place clean yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. But it also goes like very quickly. Once you decide yeah. to clean, it doesn't take But it's also two, three hours. an everyday thing yeah. that it Yeah, it's like I didn't know it was gonna be path. so big part of my everyday life to constantly clean because it's so tiny, because I didn't think about that. Yeah. Obviously you have to clean, but yeah, in such a tiny space you have to clean so much. Yeah. And then more. A habit that I like or love was the yeah. next thing, right? Yeah, the that's it. Yeah. Um yeah, I'm just going to be cheese and say that it's close to nature. Like, I yeah. love being able to open the door and just feel like, hear the birds. And yeah, definitely. Being in a new spot. Just the exploring part of it. Yeah, I love that. I like that. No, I, I think I Very think that's fun. great. It's it's true yeah. as well. I think you guys had a, a picture or video um, up earlier and it was of the doors open and you had um what was it water in front of you guys yeah um, oh it was beautiful and I think there's something that's really calming about that as well um and it is it's so special because people get too caught up in the hecticness of life and so maybe sometimes this lifestyle or living small and not having to have all of those extra expenses lets you just slow down a bit and and yeah. enjoy yeah. those things like you said about nature and things like that yeah, yeah. and I think that's the habit that I love the most at yeah. the moment is our slow mornings so we yeah, usually yeah. set the alarm at between seven and eight <laughs> he's lying eight and nine <laughs> we'll never get up at seven <laughs> <laughs> no okay he but usually usually it's at a set up <laughs> <laughs> um, but we don't really get up uh, yeah. eventually one of us will get up and we'll probably start making breakfast uh, light some candles open the doors open the maybe. doors yeah. and then we have breakfast in bed watching survivor oh, or no. robinson is the swedish version of it oh, and, cool. and that's just that's our morning, every routine. morning routine basically also and i love that accepting yeah. that it's okay to be slow in the morning because yeah. yeah. it's our lifestyle to not rush things anymore yeah i like that i think sometimes i feel guilty if i've i've not got up early and I've yeah. not got going and I don't exactly. know where that comes from I think oh no I've wasted but if you're doing stuff like that you don't feel guilty because like you say you're just doing it for yourselves and and it's yeah. okay to go a bit slower and and enjoy I like yeah. that. that's really yeah. cool um so sustainability wise um I always like to ask this question to all the podcast guests um what do you wish you or we had more of sustainability wise uh, it's a mean... tricky one it's so anything that's sustainable so so it could be as simple as i wish we had more bamboo toothbrushes but some people have said things like they they i'm trying to think of examples what other people have said so some people have said things might be they wish that we've got more um different types of vehicles more electric vehicles or a better yeah. solution to it um it could be something really really tiny um it might just be to do with clothes for example you wish that it wasn't just organic cotton and there was more of an emphasis on another material now it could be absolutely anything yeah it's still uh, an extremely hard question it is, but, it is. yeah, yeah. Well, i'm well, gonna i'm gonna go with something like this is environmentally and sustainable i guess but a trend that I've been seeing, and I think both of us have been seeing for a long time, is in grocery stores, like more and more, they're wrapping things in plastic. I was going to say the yeah. exact same thing. And yeah. it annoys the living hell out of me. Yeah, yeah, both yeah. Of us. Why do I want to buy one paprika? Yeah. Or red bell pepper? Yeah, yeah. Wrapped in plastic. Yeah. When it just costs it. Why? When it just costs it. Yeah. And. <sighs> For us pursuing this lifestyle and being minimalistic and like we don't want to collect all our trash, we want to be yeah. as, as close to zero waste as possible, even though it's super hard. Yeah. Like, we do get like our storage, no, what's it called? Uh, garbage bags. Your garbage bags, so yeah. Fast. Um, I thought the exact same as you. Yeah. Like, I would want to go into a store and want stuff to not be covered in plastic. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I know they've tried to do it with some smaller stores, haven't they? They've tried to do it with smaller items like like your muesli and granola and, and yeah. nuts and things like that. But it's crazy. Like you say, like there's so much out there that just does not need to be in plastic. I always say, we always say it to ourselves here. We're like, why, why just 
don't put it in there and then we don't have to get rid of it like it yeah. will be absolutely fine um yeah no i i completely agree with that i love that i think that's a really really good answer it's um, also it's also a fun what? challenge to challenge yourself once in a while to try to do one day without plastic ah like just, yeah just see if you can eat your breakfast without plastic with your lunch and your dinner yeah that means that you can't buy that paprika or, yeah, or yeah. bell pepper yeah, you're gonna yeah. have to cook something else and see how far you actually go i'm just gonna say it's it's almost completely impossible yeah yeah it is it's interesting isn't it and you have to sort of really start to think outside the box of what you're going to buy and things like that or maybe yeah. where you're buying from as well there's not as many yeah. of, as we used to have like old fruit and veg stores um and you just used to go in with your paper bag and get your fruit and veg and it was no plastic you would just grab them from like crates um oh, yeah. and i guess with farms and things like that we just need more of that don't we we need it to yeah. be more accessible and all over um yeah. and it's, it's my dream to be able to buy all our food at a farmer's market yeah yeah so you, let's say that you said plastic i'm gonna say another thing yeah i'd like sustainability to be more accessed yes Ac like for people to be able to access, access it more. zero waste and be able to like it should be easier to care about the environment yeah because there's so many that cares about the environment that's going the extra length for it yeah and then there's so many that just doesn't care so they'll just they'll just do whatever society tells them yeah if society shifts that and makes it then it becomes the norm yeah yeah like takes away plastic stops selling plastic to a just puts bamboo yeah 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 and people doesn't have a choice and they don't even they they're not going to think about it. No, that's it. It's stripping the choice away. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I really like that. It's like you say, if you strip the choice away, then yeah. people don't know any different. And when new generations come, they yeah. won't know any different. The toothbrushes will just be the bamboo toothbrushes. Yeah, yeah it's not going to be a like, won't be all sustainable this, choice. Yeah. It's just going to be what you get. Yeah. Yeah. And that would be awesome. Yeah. Oh, I hope this happens one day. It'd be yeah, great. Right. <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there slowly. <laughs> um, slowly our indie... sure. What was that? Sorry. No, it's slowly but surely. I hopefully. know we are hopefully. slowly, slowly. Yeah. We will get there. We're getting there little bit by little bit. But I yeah. like those answers to that. And I think it's really important. And it's nice to know that people are out there thinking about those things as well yeah really, really nice um india and joel thank you so much for chatting to me and joining me today on the tiny sessions podcast um if you guys want to hear any more um and see more about this lovely couple um you can go onto their website on the freeside.com um there's loads of cool stuff on there and videos and and resources and blog posts about all sorts of lovely topics um but a big thank you to you guys for joining me today well, thank you, for, thank having you for having us. Thank you. Thank you so much. You it's so been much. absolutely a pleasure of ours. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. It's so nice to be able to chat to you guys. Um, I realised that we were chatting for ages as well. It was so <laughs> nice. Like everything that you were talking about, I I was really hoping that you guys were going to want to talk like loads and gonna loads. Going to spin off a little bit. Yeah, no, I love it. It's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. It's really nice, like just being able to have just a really chill chat with people. And yeah. like the topics as well. I know that you you were really passionate about talking about um and uh, yeah, thank you for bringing endometriosis. That in. It's that first bit. It's like hard to like <laughs> say it. I've definitely heard about it. So um so yeah, hopefully we can just have a little bit of awareness. And if I've learned anything with um sort of social media and things like that, even if it helps just one person out there, that's one. Yeah. Person that it's yeah exactly. that day sort of thing um so yeah it's really good but um oh yeah it's so nice to chat to you guys i hope hopefully i can come and sort of see you guys i don't know when things are gonna open up i know i was told yeah what's your yeah. travel plans She's going to do you so do you yeah. live in a van no so currently i live in my parents house so i'm i'm doing the van up um and we're building the van and it's sort of on the nearly the finishing side of the inside um it's all yeah. sort of like the last bits that we've got to finish um and then i'm going in on saturday to the garage to get a quote for the outside um so i want to get it painted a totally different color um, oh we would sweet. love that as well oh i know but i'm a bit scared about what price they're gonna say. 
say to me so it might be one of those things where I go oh I wait <laughs> but we'll see, <laughs> see what it goes that dream yeah. <laughs> well, what color are you gonna paint it um I really want, want, to, want paint to paint it a sage green oh mm. so a sage green color and then have Beautiful. white as the um sign writing for Stitcher and the website oh yeah. But I'm, I can save costs by just buying the paint for that and doing the sign writing myself. So I know yeah. I can do that bit, but I don't have the space, even though I would have the best time of my life with a spray gun. <laughs> I don't have the space <laughs> to be able to do that properly. I wish I did. Oh, that would be so much fun oh. if I get a spray gun. <laughs> I, it. Yeah. I was even like, because uh, I've never, before this build, I've never used a nail gun. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, it's so much fun! It is, isn't it? It's, it's so, so much funny. Fun. My dad has taught me so much, and like, I'll grab like the drills and things, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm it. I just love it. I think it's great. I love learning everything about it. So yeah. my my plan is that I really want to do a travel trip um to Scandinavia. So I was in northern Norway um just before for our lockdown so it would have been like oh. the may before our lockdown and may into june yeah. so i was there when Where it was the, um i was in a place called um Nordskot, and it was like really really north of norway um above border so um not as far as lofton um and i stayed okay. on this island with um this lady called randy skaug who i think you guys actually you would love her um <laughs> she has this island that she i think it i want to say it was 2006 that she brought um she bought the island and she's turned it into an adventure island but it's all what? sort of what? multiple <laughs> adventures so it's things like just really stripped back stuff so she does have some sort of business like company guests who come along and she cooks mm. food for them but all the food is like fish that they've caught and and things like that um on the island yeah, i always and love it she always needs help with like maintenancing like the land and then um sort of hosting guests is part of it when she has guests there and then she has yeah. like different events that she does so she has like a blues event so blues music with food um and there's i think there's a yoga event and there's a mountain hiking event as well yes. um so it's really really cool and um it's, and you went there yeah so i was really lucky so i volunteered there um oh. and when i got to volunteer um, it had just changed that apparently Norway weren't allowed to have overseas volunteers or something. Something so had changed. Was that through work away or? No, no. So I, it's really random. It was through Instagram. There was a guy on Instagram who oh, okay. was um, posting about asking advice for charities to do with um, the military and the army because he was going on a trip with this lady. And then I saw the island and I said to him, like, this is really cool. Um, and actually at the same same time on our tv we have a tv series here that's all about um people's different spaces around the world and okay. she was on it and i What's saw it, it it was called um it's called ben fogel's new lives in the wild oh okay it's really really good so it's called new lives no, it in the really wild. Good. Yeah. um and he goes to different places like all over the world and different people's different spaces um and he like basically stays with them for like a few days and like it might be a solo person it might be a couple um in this case it was um randy who she used to have like being city life in um in sort of like the main city um in norway and then um was like nope i want to get away from this and then went and and bought this island and um and cool. i watched like it and it was yeah and it was the first time that i'd watched something and said to myself i'm going there and i don't know there. what it was i just went i'm going there i knew that i'd always wanted to see things like the northern lights and things like that but i didn't even realize at that time i didn't realize about the midnight sun and things like that until i started oh. looking into oh, it and that then really i only you. knew because she said about um oh we'll come along at may time and then i found out about the midnight sun and like I said, I'd literally just gone, I'm going there. And then after that, I'd come across this guy and I just said to him like, oh, I'd love to like help on this island. And I still to this day, I think that he like helped me or put on in a good word for me, but he says that he didn't. But um, I applied, um, contacted her by just emailing her. And then she contacted me and did a little video chat, which at the time I was really nervous about because um, <laughs> you have to look up Randy Skalg after. I send you a link, but she's basically... She's oh, you first, sent us a link? 
I'll, I'll send you a link afterwards, but she's the first Norwegian lady to climb Everest. So she's no. a really interesting lady. And like when I first arrived, um, there was a lot going on. And um, I, she asked me to arrive the same day that I'd left. So I left from Cornwall and somehow was getting myself to the You're north. You're in Cornwall? Way. Yeah, so I'm in Cornwall in the UK. Isn't that so where everybody wants to go f- That that's travelling? For holiday? Yeah. 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 No, I just I just see a lot of people like Vans are like, oh, I want to go to Cornwall. I want to go to Cornwall. Yeah. Is yeah, it, yeah. Is it like touristy town? Yeah. So it's in the summer, like it can be touristy. But I think with the pandemic, everyone is going to Cornwall. Oh. <laughs> so Cornwall is really pretty in the sense that you've got the south of Cornwall and the north of Cornwall. And the north of Cornwall is quite rugged. And then the south of Cornwall is a little bit more flatter, but not like, it's not like totally flat, but it's a little bit more um, like crisper. And whereas like the north is really rugged in terms of like going on hikes and things like that. Oh, okay. Um, mm, but people nice. like coming to Cornwall because you've got the rivers and you've got the ocean and uh, you've just got like really nice views. And when it is sunny, like it's really, really nice. Um, we do get really bad weather as well, which <laughs> everyone sees on holiday. Like we could have full on rain, but it is one of those sort of hotspot places that people want to go. Uh, to. It's, it's nice. like Cornwall, Wales, the and place Scotland. Though. Yeah, I was going to say it's like the west coast of Sweden. Uh, so, so anyway, right yeah. back to you. You went to Norway, uh, and now you're planning on going back to Scandinavia. Yeah. So I would really like to do a van trip. Um, through Sweden and then into Norway and sort of all the way up. That's what I really, really want to do. Um, depending on what happens um, with like the pandemic and things like that, I don't know if it will be that I'll do flights to places first. But the idea is that I really want to be able to set myself up so I can do a van trip and go all the way through, um, which would be yeah. amazing. I mean, and the fantastic thing about topic. Sweden at the moment is that you can travel Sweden. Yeah, so, yeah. like I'll, not I'll a problem. Going, the pandemic, it's not yeah. a thing. So I would, I would go through Denmark. Yeah, to oh, get to yeah Sweden. someone else said because Norway still have the two weeks um, quarantine quarantine rule. Yeah. I mean, you probably heard this, but you know how Sweden has dealt with the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Like not making any rules at all and letting yeah, us yeah. roam free and then yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I heard so that. we're still doing that thing. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> like now you could wear a mask in public places if you want to but it's still oh, not um, <laughs> it's recommended it's recommended, it's recommended no, but it's they're actually, not telling you, you. <laughs> they're not telling you you yeah. have to wear it on public transport but you don't, oh, they're, yeah. t- they're telling you but you don't have to like you can uh, still like you won't get oh, a fine yes, it's not like it's a law whereas in the UK no, no, definitely. No. so it's sweden is all laws. about sweden is all about like free speech you're supposed yeah. to be wherever you want and then if they're going to implement laws on what we're going to wear, yeah, that wouldn't work out. Yeah, but they're actually they're trying. They're, 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 they're working on that now to create a law for a future similar situation. Yeah, the government to have more place. power over the people, basically. Yeah, because we have uh, like we've built our whole system on democratics, meaning yeah. what we call like free choice elections. Yeah, meaning that. Everything is built in the way that it's going to take years to implement law because yeah. it needs to go through all the elections. So yeah. now when the pandemic happened, they couldn't do anything. Yeah. Because it's built on the system that we have our free choice. Yeah. So that's why the pandemic has kind of hit us harder because the government literally just said, please don't meet each other. Just please don't. Yeah. Like, just, just stay at home. And people are like, fuck you. I'll, I'll meet people anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really interesting so so at the moment it might be that sweden is all right to go to then i guess for me it would be if i went in the van it's just working out how to get there in terms of from here i know that i think i have to i would have to have the test to go to say france and then yeah see from there but, but then at the same time Germany. people have said that you have to have a pcr test at the german swedish border yeah but they don't stop you because it's eu Oh, I see. The borders are open in you. Like some people get stopped, but that's just on random tests. Oh, I see. That's interesting. Like go in the middle so of the night. Just a random. Yeah. 
Oh, that's interesting. I, I know, what I've, do you mean? If I've you, heard that. If that, you're cross borders, yeah. you always have to show your passport, basically. No, if you cross border from Denmark to Sweden, you don't have to show your passport. Oh, no, I from see. Sweden, exactly, no. from Denmark to Germany, it's the same thing. Yeah. Oh. From Germany to France, it's the same thing. Ah. Oh, that's interesting. So I've, had, I've had Swedes going from uh, like Spain to Sweden and not showing their passport once. Even though they get the PCR test because you're supposed to have a yeah. PCR test, yeah. it costs a lot of money and you yeah, put all that sure. money out yeah, and then yeah. you, you don't get stopped. Ah. So the new thing, I'm just going to tell you this because you might want to travel. So the new thing is to... Edit this out. Is, is to, yeah. No, no, you, you've stopped recording, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's all right. It's recording, but this won't be in it. Don't worry. This won't it's be just, in I'm, it. I'm keeping it going because it's got the other stuff on, but don't worry. The only worry. thing they're looking at is the date. Yeah, so, so there's a lot of people that photoshopping them. Or oh. the second option is to don't, oh, don't get a PCR test at all. Yeah. And you try the border. If you come to the border and they say you have to have a test, you're like, oh, I had to have a test. And they have a little test cab in there. Oh, but they don't tell you that because they don't want everyone to just go, oh, I'll just turn up. Uh -huh. that yeah, that, that's what I've heard that you, yeah. or you go back yeah. like to the, to the closest city. Yeah. But like yeah. saving those 200 bucks might be more worth it. Yeah. Than mm -hmm. having yeah. to do in every country. Yeah. But don't tell anybody but, this, mean, but I've no, heard this. No, Obviously, it's safety first for everyone all around yeah. the globe. Also, we don't know if this is true, but I've yeah, heard it. That's it. Mm -hmm. No, it's good to research into though. Um, but oh, that's um, really we, we we're vaccinated. Yeah, so. we're vaccinated. So yeah, we're, we're safe. You've had your vaccine. See, in yeah. England, they're doing uh, vaccinations for thirty nine and thirty eight year olds, and then they're going to do uh, thirty eight to thirty one. I think. Um, okay. It was meant to be straight down, unless they change it. Um, How old but, are you? So I've I've just turned thirty. So, so you're thought, just on the line there. Yeah. So I thought it was going to be that it would go under foot because before it was like under 60s, under 50s, yeah. under 40s. But when it got to 40s, it's really weird. It's kind of gone 40s and then 39, 38. And it's like <laughs> not quite. But I think they're trying to halt it because there's, um, I think we call it AstraZeneca. Uh, that yeah, one, I get that. They've had a few problems with it. So I think they're trying to like wait it out. So I think that's why they're all of a sudden doing these funny little yeah. little brackets. But I thought, oh, it's my birthday present. <laughs> I get back. <laughs> and then they're like, no, no, wait a bit. <laughs> How old are you guys, if you don't mind you asking? I'm 28. I'm 25 nice ah so cool. we did we didn't get our vaccine because of age because no. we got it because we we're working with as caretakers work. yeah. yeah yeah that's the same with my dad he works um with elderly people and he was able to get his like really, really yeah early. i got mine in january yeah my dad yeah. is elderly and working with elderly people yeah so yeah. like we got our super super early on yeah that's so cool there's um when we were saying about um sweden and norway there's um a company called what are they called northern soul journey yeah northern soul journey um uh -huh. and they've told me to contact them sort of around july august time um and they have people help on their um homestead site um and they're really cool and they do the husky training um oh. and there's just this couple who like around like our age um and they've set up this amazing homestead and they've got all of these huskies um and oh. like when it's like the season they then take like um uh sort of holiday makers um on sledge tours and things like that well, um we but a job exactly that we, job. Have, we applied for a job like that did you yeah, in Sweden or in, in Norway? Job, January, February, but we yeah. didn't get it, right? We did, no, we were we applied one day too late. Oh actually. no! Where was that in Norway? Because I know that there's one in northern yeah. Norway that that specialises. Yeah. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but I know that there uh, is one in northern Norway. What's the name? The, mm? <laughs> she's squeezing my leg really hard <laughs> because I'm that late. <laughs> was it your fault that it was late? Was it your fault? You haven't told me that he was supposed to apply for the job and he's like oh we didn't get it oh no oh dear really? you to applied too late <laughs> oh well I, no it wasn't well, meant I, I to be time, it wasn't meant to be <laughs> it wasn't meant to be yeah exactly no, that's it on, on <laughs> well well it doesn't happen it doesn't matter what's the name it's over something fin finmark finmark yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i've had a finmark so that's oh, where it was, I, and it was like a, a snow or ice kind of hotel. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But like, so I, I know that I've been I've been touching if you have a little bit of time to talk about future collaborations. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I do I have like seen a few of the emails, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I haven't really been following along because Joel has been using different web mails to email yeah, from. But, like, no problem. Email, but <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like to talk about your propositions like we do love to at the same time we have never made any money off our Instagram at all so it's oh, a really okay. it's a job that takes a lot of time yeah, yeah. and Definitely. we don't get anything for it and that's why yeah. we have our media kit and your and our price cheats yeah totally see. understand that um but at the same time we love small companies yeah and being able to support small companies especially and sustainable ones sustainable yeah. countries and if we yeah. can do something together yeah that definitely benefit us mutually yeah that's something yeah, yeah. that we that's can that's it that's what's most important that it works for you guys as well so yeah you guys are happy and it works for still I, I have a hard time understanding all the business emails so I'd rather yeah. just like do you have <laughs> do you have any ideas if you want to work with us in any way or am yeah. I throwing you no. No, 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 that's fine. Yeah, okay. Go. What did you have something? Wait, uh, yeah, I think Joe, were you about to say something, Joe? No, he's bringing up the email. No, Are so you? you? read the emails, right? Yeah, but I got right. all confused. Oh, I know. I yeah. sort of fired loads of things out of there. It's always hard when it's in emails. Um, so I think one of the things that I said about was I said a few different options because the the hardest thing is that when it's a small business, it's really hard having the cash flow to be able to pay yeah. for everything. But then at the same time, because I understand how it works with everything. Yeah, you know how a small business is. I know so how it works. works for you guys as well. So it's finding yeah. that sort of happy medium. And I know that like some people want to be ambassadors and they kind of just do it on the basis where they're like, you know what, we really love what you're doing. So let's just go for it. And that's what um, I've got our Cornish Adventure, um, they do. So I don't pay them. They just do it on the side, but there's no pressure for them to. And they get some stuff. They get some products from you to like. Yeah. So... I haven't really had a look around, but you do some, you do some baskets and you do like. Yeah. Stuff. yeah that's it so I do loads of like sustainable accessories and then I've got the new curtains and blinds coming and pillowcases oh yeah I saw that as well um, so they're on their way um and then I went into accessories so the 100% hemp um uh little crochet handmade crochet bag so everything's all handmade um mm -hmm. or do you make it my my mum my amazing mum crochet oh no <laughs> way <laughs> have to teach me because I'm really scared <laughs> that I don't have a crochet <laughs> otherwise um so everything so that's why it's really like really specific so all of the um soap bags um they're all hand crocheted the bigger bags are all hand crocheted so those are all made out of 100% um, hemp um and with the bags they've been really popular because people can use them for different things so our Cornish Adventure uses them for their fruit bowl and then afterwards they then use it when they want to go down to the beach so it's about like having like versatility and like different uses so some people put magazines or toys in um and things like do that mean, and then... um, do you mean these bags you can probably not see that no you won't be able yeah, to see that. Yeah, that's it on the on the left hand side. Yeah, those bags. Yeah, the the, the most recent picture. Of yeah, you. That, that's the basket. That's it. Yeah, and that was a soap basket from the beginning. Like, no, so that one that one's a hundred percent hemp, and that's the bag. And then further down, you'll see a, there's a tiny one, and that's what the the little soap bags are. So you put your soap in, and then you've got a soft side on the inside and a, a slightly rougher side, but not rough that it's, it hurts um, on the outside. And you can use it as an exfoliator. And it's, uh. it's called a soap saver in England. So you put your soap in and it collects the soap at the bottom and it doesn't waste the soap dripping out. Um, and then you've got the use of using it as an exfoliator as well. Um, yeah, exfoliating soap bags. Kitchens and bathrooms and things like that. Your mom makes them. Yeah, she's amazing. And then we've got the dish cloths and face cloths. They're made um, with um, bamboo and cotton. Um, so all the materials and fibres that I use, I always, always, I know I can get organic cotton, but when I can, I try and look for bamboo or hemp or I have some recycled um, denim jeans 
um, yarn that's coming. Oh. Um, so they've taken oh. all the fibres out of um, jeans and they've they've spun it into a yarn. Um, so I'm hoping to be able to use that next as well. Um, and I also have, these haven't come out yet, but I've got um, corn leather placemats. So it's leather that's vegan, but it's made out of corn, which is really oh. bizarre. So... <laughs> So they still have to put other fibres with it to get it all together. But the main sort of pulp fibre that they use is corn, which is like blows my mind. So I knew about pineapple leather. And then when we had the pandemic, they had a shortage of um, accessing it. So then I did some more research and then I found corn leather, which is really oh, cool. Wow. And it's, it's wow. really, really nice. Um, so I'm, so uh, I have an idea. Yeah. We can all discuss it uh, yeah, yeah. further on. Like we are on 8,000 followers at the moment. We yeah. want to do kind of like a big 10,000 10, followers giveaway. Oh yeah, sure. Um, like a gift basket. Yeah, like a gift basket. We want yeah. to contact, we have, we have a connection with a um, natural biodegradable hand soap and yeah, yeah. makeups at the moment. Yeah. Anyway. And we have biodegradable sunglasses that are actually worth $180 oh, each. Wow. That's um, cool. I didn't then, know it existed. No, it's no, new. Is, it's it's new. releasing. It's so cool. That's yeah, it's cool. stay on to our page because we're going to, they're being shipped from the States. So we yeah, haven't seen them, them yet. Yeah. Yeah. But you will see when the sponsored post goes up because it's it's our first sponsored post ever. And it's they're super cool. The and second, second first Good. one we get in page. This is like your first mate. Yeah. The first paid one and yeah. they're completely biodegradable it's super cool that's so cool um, but so we're thinking of doing some kind of big gift basket giveaway with nice. like follow us follow the company the, yeah the group company and then we'll put that all together and we'll just do one tag one entry yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So maybe if you want to jump on that with maybe your soap yeah we can talk about that yeah, I'm super Better. interested in that. I think that works really well um, because even if I give you guys the product, um, it works well because if it's the case, the really simple case of when you do a giveaway and you have yeah. to follow each each person. Yeah, follow product, each. Yeah. Then it, uh, it benefits me as well. I'm I'm really up for that. That'd be really That's lovely. That's why I mean it benefits both way. of us. We yeah. can put together a package. With yeah, it'd be lovely to support that. I know because the reason why we, we charge or why we want to charge is because we realized after doing our first collaboration is we have to pay we, to we, we still work. have to pay tax no we have to so if you send us a crocheted and let's say i don't know what you charge for them let's say you charge 50 yeah, euros yeah. for something that we buy yeah. that we get from you we have, we to, have pay, to pay tax on that so 50 we have to pay 15 30 uh, percent oh yeah 30%, so yeah so we have to pay 15 euros to receive that item from you through the post yeah. yeah, I see. And that's yeah. because the British government sees influencers and Instagram as a like things are salary. Yeah. So that it would be like you paying us 50, 50 yeah. euros and then we have to pay tax on that. Yeah. So that's why. So like we just want to keep on the part like we're not going to pay to work. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's not a very that, profitable business. That, that's like our main thing. But yeah. if we do a giveaway, we don't we don't get paid for anything. That's no, that's it. That's it. So we can go around that. Yeah. So the yeah. with the the guys that you were saying about, if they're paying you, does it then mean that it's it's enough that it will cover that, but you still will get paid because it still yeah, will yeah, we'll get paid. a little bit of money. We charge accordingly. So yeah. it's different if you if it's a Swedish company or yeah, if it's, it's all, an international company. It's like Swedish governments are not happy about influencers or like Instagram marketing. Yeah. They make you pay. Last year, they actually did like a special tax investigation. just in, Targeting micro-influencers, yeah. making sure they, de- they weren't receiving stuff for marketing, like stuff for posts. Yeah. Oh, I see. So we're being really careful about it. Yeah. But also the part of if let's say that you send us something for this giveaway and we get the yeah. glasses we we do a marketed post with yeah. what sponsored post for the glasses but since we don't keep them we send them away after that yeah means we don't get paid at them like yeah 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 it's, so it's sort a whole, of a it's a whole hole we call it yeah it's the whole thing that we have to think about when, yeah because we don't want to pay to run our instagram no that's, no, no that's it and that's not 
um sort of going back to sustainability it's not sustainable <laughs> like you can't it's just not sustainable. <laughs> you can't you can't make a living that way <laughs> no but if we can talk more when we hit closer to 10k but yeah. like if if you're interested in that that's something that would be interesting yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. I'm really honestly I'm really interested in that I'd love to yeah. support that I'm really up for that it'd be really really cool really awesome. really cool um yeah no I'd love that gift yeah. Gift yeah it's like a little gift box isn't it like a yeah. Yeah. at Christmas here we call them hampers as well you can get little hampers. hampers yeah hampers so instead of like a food hamper you have like a gift hamper and it has Ooh. like different gifts in um or a gift oh. box as well if you have the one um but hampers oh. quite cute <laughs> Gift hamper. Yeah. I'm just curious about when your trip to Norway. Did you get to see the Northern Lights, or I did? So I went when um yeah. So I saw the Midnight Sun, which was super interesting because I was falling asleep trying to make myself go to sleep because I knew that I'd be really, really like tired um because we were working there and then I had like an eye mask to like try and make myself feel like it was night time <laughs> but then I'd wake up and I'd find out like that Randy had gone off and she'd gone off and um done fishing and things like this at like 2 a.m in the morning or something and I was like oh no I've missed out <laughs> and I kept going, I'm missing out but I was like no I must sleep but I love the midnight sun like I would um, love to go again into in the midnight sun. Like I loved it. I think it was so cool. It's actually funny because if you go to a few places uh, in the northern part, um, like ski resorts, you can actually go like midnight skiing or midnight snowboarding. That's so fun. The ski lifts are <laughs> up at midnight because it's, it's, bright. it's still bright outside. It's still bright. Yeah, it's like it's daytime, isn't it? It's like it's lunchtime. Yeah. Like I think I think it's up. more about the sun doesn't set at all for about seven or eight days. Ah, okay. Uh, Is it okay if I just take a photo of all of us? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, no worries. Everybody look happy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was it. Uh, I know, so that's, that's really cool. Uh, but I think even though those eight days, out of those days as well, like the sun sets like for two minutes, yeah or three minutes yeah, so and four minutes just it's down. literally like just, yeah it goes down here and it goes back up yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so bizarre but then i guess then when it comes to your winter it's just it's totally different it's reversed and northern lights as well which i would yeah. still love to see I oh yeah same the, the sun doesn't rise I for have you not? Days. no none of us have like we I've live seen, in the northern light countries and okay, I live in the Northern Light countries and I still haven't seen them. Oh, well, I think though that's a really common thing because like, I know my yeah. brother, he lives in Scotland and I've said to him, like, I'd like to do a trip of Northern Scotland, which have all these little like islands and, and like locks and lakes mm. and things. And like, it looks really, really nice. And he said to me, he was like, you're going to see more of Scotland than I do. Like people don't yeah. always get to see because you're sort of doing everything else that you don't stop and see the rest. Oh, you no, need to come see the Northern well, Lights with me then. <laughs> explore the rest of the world before you yeah. explore your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But yes, yeah. we'll come see the Northern Lights with you. Yeah, let's do <laughs> it. I want to see it too. Yeah. <laughs> I think the trivia is there's actually something called like the Southern Light as well. It's exactly the same. Oh, really? But it's in the South. But it's like mm -hmm. a more... Like, like we're speaking location. South America, like way down? No, I would say like on the southern part of the hemisphere. Uh, hmm. didn't know that. Oh, I have to just, look at that. You know what I... the burial on lights is? Oh, no, I just really need to go to the bathroom now. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm all right. It's all that wine. I'm like that. <laughs> I'm always like that. Oh, so it's on the southern part of the hemisphere. Yeah, like I haven't, I haven't seen it there, but that's what I've been told. Then it there under the mountain. Then it under the we have on the I have to look that up. That sounds really cool. I remember when I was in Oslo, and I remember that it was really bizarre going from the north and it being so bright, and then going to Oslo, yeah. and like it kind of went. We call it dusk here. I don't know what you guys call it in Sweden, but it. 
where it was light, but it still went slightly dark, not pitch mm. black or anything, but just like slightly dark. Um, and that was really bizarre as well. It was like weird going from that to that and not how being... did you how did you like Oslo? I was like I liked Oslo, but it was it was bizarre for me from going from somewhere so remote. And then I sort of I sort of like stepped into it slightly because I went from Oz, um, from the northern uh, Norway island and then I went up to uh, Lofoten Island and Henningsvar, yeah. I think it's called. Um, so I went up Hellesvar, there, yeah. um, which was really cool. So that was a little bit busier than than my remote island that I was on <laughs> by the boat. And then um, and then I went to Oslo. But I remember I remember when I left Oslo that I said to myself I liked it, but I wouldn't be able to be there like all the time. But I think oh, it's so expensive. Kind of like really city, like full on city uh, sort of person. Is, I, I've lived in Oslo a couple of times actually. And the summer in Oslo is really amazing. There's lots that go on, like loads of stuff, isn't there? Loads of stuff. And it's not it's not too big. Like I don't really call it it's like it, it's pretty small for being a capital. Yeah. It's like yeah, a it was big easy village. to get around. Yeah. I like that. I like that it was easy to get that. And I know I've been to Stockholm as well, but only, only briefly. And I really want to see more Stockholm because I've got to see a little bit. Terrible. Oh, terrible. <laughs> terrible. But it's just like the part of getting around in Stockholm is... No, no, we're just from the rivaling <laughs> town. Of Are so... you? What's your rival town? No, we're so from Gothenburg. Gothenburg, Gothenburg and Stockholm oh, is... Yeah. Yeah, that's where the you went, isn't it? Biggest, the biggest city. Yeah, the second biggest and the biggest city, meaning that we're constantly fighting. Oh, I see. This rivalry. So I saw, I remember looking at Gothenburg and I was like, oh, I wonder what that's like. And then is there a big university life there? Yeah. Yeah. It is. But is there a lot going on because of that? No, I wouldn't say that university brings it's more student, stuff going on. No. But like Gothenburg, if, if we were to compare the two cities, Gothenburg is usually in tourist guides or like people that's been traveling to both cities. It's more friendly. It's more open minded. Nice. It's easier to get around. It's more beautiful. But I'm also partial. I'm so obviously. <laughs> I'm heading there so, next. <laughs> yeah. So yes. I would, I would say people in Stockholm consider themselves to be civilized and then they call, call us fishermen. Yeah. Oh, I see. The harbor city. And it's just, it's just it's a, a typical. Bit more, it's a bit rough the way you speak. Yeah, yeah. It's My so, dialect, is different. Different. dialect yeah. is different. Yeah, because I know um, in Oslo, like when I was in northern Norway, uh, they would say oh, that, such like difference. the dialect was totally different. And then on Oslo, it was quite like they would say, "Oh, it's really like sing songy," and it would go up and down. Yeah. And I made this lovely friend, and she used to say that her friends from uh, northern Norway always sort of make uh, like humor in front of her because when she's listening to someone in between she go hmm, hmm, like this and she does that and I love it but apparently in northern Norway they like they don't do that <laughs> and it's really oh, funny do that in Sweden. Uh, a song to mm -hmm. it it's really mm -hmm. funny but I love that I like that like when you're listening to someone you're like hmm. <laughs> it's like no that, that, that's we do that. Them that. that's, that's a part of our listening. conversation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like, like that. Like M M M M. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. And you say precis. Ah, oh, precis. Yeah, we say words as well, but that yeah. every language is that uh, of words. But I think like just the, the way mm -hmm. that we're acknowledging mm -hmm. that we're listening acknowledging to the conversation. Yeah. yeah, that's it. But I mean, don't you do the same in English? Don't you say mm? Mm -hmm. Uh no, I think some people mm -hmm. might. I think I don't know. It depends. I, not so everyone saying, does. It's not like a, a, like, a like a thing as such. I think when people are chatting, like some people will, some people go mm, like in general, but not everyone does. So some people will sort of just wait and then and then speak. So they just be really silent. And then some people, uh, what do I do? I'm very chatty, so I probably don't do. <laughs> people but I guess I probably when I'm. <laughs> what is that? That's why you do po two podcasts in a day. Yeah, that's it. And then I go to sleep and like, that's my channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder what I do. I think I probably, I I probably sort of just say like, yeah, 
Like, yeah, or uh, ah? Do you say ah? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't say ah, uh, but some people do. But I think I probably yeah. just go, ah, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, oh, I yeah. see. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Uh, I think I say that quite a lot. Um, which, but yeah, it's interesting. I'm going to be aware of it now. I want to like work out what I, mm-hmm. what I like, yeah. say. But yeah, I just, I always remember that. I always think it was really, <laughs> really fun. Really, really liked that she had this sort of just like little like note that she says. <laughs> <laughs> it was really nice but yeah I definitely really want to do the Scandinavia trip and I'm, I'd like to one day go so I'm half Maltese um and I'd like to go from Italy to Malta as well um but that's sort of like my last trip um in terms of like my little trips that I want to do because I know that once I've gone from Cornwall to Scotland I can do the drive so that's fine which I know I can do already but I've like I can then go right I've done that bit and then Mm -hmm. I'd like to do Sweden to Norway um now via Denmark which would be really cool and then um I'd like to do Italy to Malta um and I'm leaving that till last just because the roads and Italian driving and everything oh no sorry oh I raised my hand because I wanted to say something this is oh he's getting drunk he's getting drunk sometimes we do that or we have a spoon <laughs> and we pass a spoon around i'm like what What do you want High five. <laughs> but yeah i really want to like that. is your plan to go full-time oh sorry he raised his hand we forgot <laughs> about that. Oh, yeah. so it's your turn <laughs> I got to talk. no i was curious about uh going from italy is there a ferry going to get takes to you it. all the way um oh, no oh. so you'd have to go you for england you'd have to go from england to well there might be actually there might be i haven't double checked that normally people go from england to france and then go yeah. to italy but yeah then from italy to ferry. malta yeah yeah so from italy to malta there'll be a ferry that goes goes across yeah so that, yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah it's from sicily go... so from sicily to malta is where you get the ferry that goes across if you did by the way when you go to Sweden, you can actually drive to Kiel. You can drive you to can Germany. Take, of there. You can take the ferry yeah. all the way over to Gothenburg. Oh, where cool. We are. Where are we at? Ah, yeah. but, uh, I think it's like a 12 or 14 hour ferry. Yeah, it's a pretty long one. Oh. So you sleep on the ferry, you get a room. Yeah. Might be a day, I'm not sure. I can't remember. That's so are you, planning on, are you planning yeah, on doing Kiel. full time? Or are you just planning In on doing van. weekend traveler? I, I haven't worked out, so I've deliberately done the van so that it's like a little apartment and it's a show home for events and it's like a studio. So I've got um, a Wi-Fi router in there and solar panels on top. Um, yeah. so I've, I'm doing it so that it's like a little apartment. So if I want to, I can live in it full time. Um, before I was in a job where I was saving um, for deposit if I wanted to buy a little place and rent it out um but oh, that's then smart, pardon that's smart though yes like, that's... that's what I was thinking but then I got made redundant and then I had a real hassle with like my redundancy and then afterwards what, what, what's that? Dun- uh, dun- redundant, redundant so redundant when you get um oh. oh it's like um when your when your job ends and they you're not you're not sacked in a sense but um they like let go of you but they're meant to do it a certain way. So if you're made redundant, it might be because of COVID and they can't they can't no longer keep enough staff on. Oh, uh, but are, so they, have to let are they allowed go. to bid, like are you are you promised to get your job back if they get on their feet again? No. So no. legally in the UK, if they let you go in this way, they're meant to give you a week's notice pay. So you're meant to get a week's pay, you're meant to get your holiday pay. And you're meant to get anything that's sort of not been paid. So, for example, if you're paid pensions, you're meant to get that paid. Um, and the, uh, so and the, you get everything as a big amount. Of yeah, money. that's it. And then depending on how many years you've been working for that company for, you'll then get like a bigger amount of money. But regardless of how long you've worked for, like the minimum that you're meant to get is a week. But unfortunately, mm. my bosses weren't that great, <laughs> and I learned that they were, no. and they didn't give me the week's pay, and they tried not to give me any pensions pay, and all of but this you, stuff. You, 
but I got it all sorted. Yeah. Did you file a police report again? Like, yes. I think they didn't think that I was going to be switched on. So in England, we've got these sort of like authorities that you can call up and ask for like free advice and free help. Oh, yeah. Um, and then once I called one of them, it then went to another one and then another one. That's how I found out that like other stuff hadn't been done properly. Um, and then I basically emailed them and listed who I'd spoken to and they realised that they couldn't get found it. You're going to give them a, <laughs> like... A yeah. bad time. If, you want, if you want to you can like take people to court but the problem with that is like it can take two years and yeah, I realized really quickly how stressful it was becoming because I had already wanted to leave the company there was like we call it grievances which is where like your boss doesn't treat you nice or they might shout oh, okay. strongly and things like that so we'd had some of those situations so I was already looking to like leave and I was looking at jobs to leave but then when this happened you're not meant to be made redundant on the spot so you're not meant to lose your job on the spot you're meant to be told why you're losing your job um, and there's like certain rules in place and you're meant to have like a meeting beforehand and like sort of like stages leading like they should tell it. you about the situation about yeah. COVID and that they're That's gonna have it. to let you go and blah blah blah, blah, blah yeah blah. well in my case I turned up for work they didn't let me in the workshop and he went to talk to me outside of the work and um, what? that was pretty redundant it was really awful <laughs> it's so bad like I laugh about oh. it but it's so bad <laughs> like it's so bad like you you shouldn't treat anyone like that and I think if it was someone younger than me as well it would be really really what did you do like everyone what, know what what you're entitled to yeah what um, what were you working with um it was a candle company so I was hand pouring candles and then they made me operational manager which was basically like running their business so when we had the pandemic they um they had to stay at home and look after their kids which was fine but we basically carried on running the the company, practical yeah. side of the company and then I did all the gift packaging all the wrapping and they want because I was their first employer beforehand they wanted me to sort of oversee things but they didn't like that when things weren't okay or they did stuff that wasn't okay myself and my colleague chose to say but it then started getting unhealthy because I got to a stage where I didn't even want to I couldn't be bothered to like say or comment on anything um uh. it got stage, like, I didn't want to send the message to say oh how come this happened but I did mm. all, we always stuck up for ourselves and things but it's mm. it's a really good thing that I'm not there like my best friend when I told her most people were like oh no I'm so sorry to hear this this is really bad my best friend she turned around and she went this is fantastic <laughs> <laughs> like, you get so we can play. yeah she's like this is so good so it was only it's meant to be straight away that you get what's called a p45 but it took a month for me to actually get it and it was bad uh, they ended up they tried to threaten me with silly things that didn't even happen uh, but was, why though because you were doing a great job you were yeah yeah, no, they even said that when they went to get rid of me. They were like, this isn't anything new. You've been really good. And like, I don't know. I think I think some people, their, their sort of true colours came out. But I was really yeah. glad to wow. go. So from that, it means that I was able to then refocus into Stitcher instead of trying to juggle it. And then the idea is that now I'll look for remote work that's alongside it, um, which I've been offered. Actually, you might like this company. So there's a company called... I call it locally. So it's local.ie. I'll send you a link to them afterwards. But they um, they basically run, I call it like local tours. So it's taking people out for a walk or, or a road trip. Uh, it could be half a day or an hour or across two <clears throat> days, for example. And you take people out and you show them, but not in a tourist way. So you what did you say it was called? The place, the local? Local.ie. Local.ie. Well, getlocal.ie. Um, Could it be get local? No, it's... Well, why don't you use... So on the... Instagram, it's L-O-C-A L-I-E Yep. And then dot C-O Wait, sorry, you just L O C A. And then L I E. L I E. And then full stop. 
Yep. And then C O. Yeah. Yep. That's fine. So they do they do like yeah, they basically do tours without it being like a touristy thing. Yeah. So it's a local taking people on a tour. So there's a there is a commission to it. It's fair it is quite a high commission, but then if you just want a little bit of extra money and just a little extra something coming in, um, it's quite cool. Um and I'm in touch That's with the great. guys at the moment who do it. Um, so I can always tell them if you decide later on or at any stage in the future that you're interested, I can always let them know firsthand for you guys. I've actually, I've, I've done the ex, that exact thing. Have you? In India. In, oh, wow. Uh, I, it's kind of funny. I, so, I just did it for free, free, free bed and food. And I got really good friends with one of the, like the manager. Yeah. Kind of, not a hostel, but kind of a hostel. It was just a weird mix, but great. So this was in a sacred city. So oh, wow. you're not allowed to drink, you're not allowed to eat meat or anything. It's against yeah. the law. And there's a lot of tourists coming there and doing like yoga retreats and stuff. So I would take them out uh, on like waterfall uh, and uh, forest walks. That's basically. cool. I will rent scooters for them and go out and yeah. That's really cool. So it's the same thing, really. Yeah. But I was also like myself. I've only been there for like a month. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know all the secret spots. (laughs) You're like, yeah, sure. What a good place. (laughs) Do I I pay to meet a local? So, for example, if you guys came to Cornwall, you would pay for one of the, the trips. So it might be a half day tour yeah. to the castle around here for example or you might go ah oh, actually let's go on a road trip with nicole so you'll pay for three days worth of road trip and you then see like a section of cornwall for three days for example but so like how YouTube. much do you pay? so i i can't remember how much it is specifically they did say it's something like i think they said something like it was 90 i want to say like 90 pounds so it would be like 90 euros for like the shorter one. And then it was like a hundred and something for the large one. But the commission percentage is slightly high. So it's 29%. So normally oh, okay. like you want something to be like 20%, but they're like yeah. a small startup company, but it's 29% because that, oh, that sort of back. 9% is where they're doing the advertising and they advertise you. So then it helps you get, you haven't got to do what I would say is the hard part of trying to find people. Um, uh, you can do it yeah. if you want on the side extra, I guess. But you haven't got to do that hard part of, they've got the website, people, they advertise their website in selected places and areas. So then people then go to the website. So they're, they're organizing getting the customers to the website. But it's like my friend said, like sometimes, even if you just want a little bit of extra extra work but I'm hoping I'm going to look into doing that and then I'm also looking into um I've got some friends who run this um charity called the Gander Boys and um they they live in London but they're um from Uganda and um they do um through music they make awareness for period poverty um oh. and they're really really lovely guys and they asked me about like a year ago but at the time I was like no no I can't like I can't always do like commission things um and I said to them recently I said no I'll do this and basically it's where um I'm like an agent for them so mm-hmm. if there's events okay. that I find um I'll find out about it and I'll contact um the event and then I can choose to carry it all the way through or I can, if they're interested, I can then pass it to the guys of the Gander Boys and then they do the final sort of negotiating bit. So uh, I have okay. to worry about that bit. And then if that gets booked, then I get a percentage from them of the final fee that they charge. So this is super interesting uh, if we're going to get into, because I mean, you know that we are slowly trying to shift towards being digital nomads, even though we literally have no education whatsoever Aww. of anything, you know? Um, so are you digital at the moment, since you just got laid off from a very local-based job a year ago? Uh, have you switched to being digital now? I, I would say, I mean, at the moment, why I haven't started the locally company, 
I would say in terms of stip show I am but then I do do sort of like wholesale companies and some of them might be local where I wholesale to a store um and I are you, so, you sell stitch uh, products to local stores as well yeah yeah so how does so your mom have time to do all yeah, of this how does your mom this have time? is amazing I want time to do it all no how, how does your mom have time to do yeah. oh I know bless her so my mum's retired <laughs> and bless her <laughs> honestly I'm like she amazes me <laughs> and I always mom, I need hundred <laughs> So the wholesale bit is like really really new so at the moment they're just like small orders but then I've been accepted on to I don't know if you've heard of it we have a company here called not on the high street and Etsy oh. so Etsy and not on the high street are like platforms that people go on to and say you've got a like uh, a birthday present you can type uh girls birthday presents and it will come up with all these handmade artists and it's all in one well, website. I, 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 I want to yeah. I want to open an Etsy store. So it's like right. it's like so not on the high street, it's like Etsy. So they're sort of similar. Um so I've got accepted uh-huh. onto them. And then my mum was like, oh no, <laughs> what if it takes <laughs> off? And obviously, like we want it to take off. But I've always said to her, I, and it's really important with anything like that, like I've always said, you're not a machine. I like yeah. I stipulate in the website as well, like items are often made to order so they will take two weeks unless said otherwise um so it's sort of just being honest and sort of stipulating all of that but we're on that, to the next thing how do you share the profit with oh what with my mum yeah like how do you pay for the work with, that she does with the same time you're doing your work so with so if so yeah, normally i'm gonna tell you the reason that i'm asking this because my mom is a seamstress yeah and she's he's what's what's it called retired oh yeah but she doesn't sell any of her stuff because she doesn't know any of the marketing stuff i see well and so far we do so we're kind of in close to like it would be possible for us to sell my mom's stuff yeah definitely how do you split it so there's there's all sorts of different ways of doing it so with with my mom she just wanted some money that just brings in a little bit of money for her to treat herself I've done it I said to her from the offset that if I um had her making things I wanted her to be paid properly yeah but I can't pay her I'm not in a position to pay her like uh um like an hourly wage or anything like that so I've done the model that my um dad worked with which my dad works for handmade artists who lives down the road from me and um he makes these amazing amazing products and um he works for her and he works in his garage and she works in her garage and he um does uh, it's called wet sanding so he sands down her products um mm-hmm. and with that he gets paid per product so at first for example um he will get paid £1.60 per item, which at first sounds like really, really little. But he worked out the other day that where he's got so fast at it, he can get £16 an hour. So it Uh. just depends on what it is that you're doing. But with my mum, for example, when it's something like crochet um, and sometimes like... It takes hours. It takes hours. And you can't... You can never pay enough for no when, when it comes to with that so, like, so that that's what i've been thinking about with, with stitcher because i know my mom has been trying to sell her stuff for yeah my whole life and that's kind of been her kind of livelihood because she's she's sick so she's retired because she can't work yeah for my whole life yeah um, and i mean if i just look at this like this the swedish storage bag and in, in your etsy shop oh like, yeah, yeah. Bag, 28 pounds yeah for me, knowing what work it goes into, that's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, I don't, that's just it's, ridiculous. It's like you said, it's how how do you get that price? So, for example, with mum, with the bags, I pay her. So I've done it on the business model that my dad has. So I pay her a set price per bag that's sold. So with the bags, for example, she gets uh, five pounds per bag. But then other items, it might be three pounds, it could be two pounds, it could be it could be more. You choose what what price it is, but you have to factor in that when you're doing your pricing, um, yeah. 
you have to factor in so that would be the labor but then you have to factor in your materials um yeah. and you have to factor in your overheads um i can always say it will be in english but i can always send you guys uh it's like a it's basically like a price layout um oh, yeah. there's a really good resource that has them all and has loads of other stuff but they're the three main things that you have and then once you add those together you have to times it by two and that creates your wholesale price so the wholesale price is what wow. i would charge a store to have my product but for myself for stitcher i then times that by two again so i'm yeah. doubling it again and that's yeah. what my retail price is which means that all those th three things are covered the labor the overheads and um the materials and then everything else then becomes your profit or your cash flow that goes back yeah. into the business so there's there's like a like a price now let's say you, you charge her five you charge yourself five you charge material five 50 then you double that to end up at 30. yeah that's yeah but of. with with those because i don't i don't charge myself for making but in my overheads I yeah. cover the other stuff that I need, if that makes sense. Um, whereas the things that I make, so for example, all of the stitched pieces, so like the artwork and things like that. Oh yeah. yeah. What I I pay myself an hourly fee. So the other way of doing it is that uh, sort of, for example, off the top of my head, like say you want to charge your uh, mum ten pounds per hour, then it would be that you you work out how many hours it takes and you charge it that way but it is hard it's hard getting that happy medium of the price that people are happy to pay but yeah then also being able to physically make it and yeah because make a profit is, from it it's just it's people don't understand what goes the behind time that goes into it yeah that's at it all yeah and that's why like i know you've seen our media kit and our price sheet it's high it is no but, but it's high for a reason though it is high because you know it is high because of that we we have put so many hours into this instagram yeah. it's ridiculous like That's we it. we put so many hours a day into it and yeah. even though it's still fun it's yeah just fun for fun um like if we want to turn this into a profitable business we need to understand our worth yeah but just also, like half of that price goes away it goes to tax. taxes yeah yeah because so, of taxes that you guys have got yeah and then so half of it goes away for taxes and then we're two people so let's split that into double like well let's split that meaning yeah. that we just end up with maybe working 10 15 20 hours for 50, 50 bucks yeah. yeah so there's there's two ways of doing that as well so for example when like when you've got your own business you can do it so that your they call it dividends which is a really funny word but it's basically where when all of your profits go into your bank for example um you can choose to leave it there and take chunks out as and when and you mm. can pay so they call it dividends so so you might pay yourself at the end of the month and pay yourself a chunk or the start of the month for example um and you can you can pay yourself that way or you can pay yourself as in like a a bit like an hourly rate most yeah. most people do it as dividends chunk, right? and they take a chunk out as yeah. and when because sometimes when it fluctuates you might have a quieter month and you think oh actually i'm all right this month i'll leave that in there and then the following month then you'll take out more of a chunk maybe yeah that depends on what kind of uh, company you decide yeah. to do instead because yeah. we got yeah. if you do um we call it a b but well, like a stock market company yeah or yeah a private then, business. Then, then you're allowed yeah. to do that otherwise if you do like um uh, what do you call it like a, a single person uh company yeah yeah, yeah 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 then you're not allowed to do it you have to you have to withdraw everything like all the profit has to go all the time you can't keep it inside see. of the company uh mm. for later oh i see so it's slightly different out there yes yeah, so I'm, I'm just gonna 
pop in here and say that you you are allowed to hang up whenever you want to. We've had some wines, so like we can keep going. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's so nice. That's what just I was so you know, Nicole. Like you're more than fine to say. For so stuff. long, I know. Like, I will have to go soon because I gotta eat before the one at seven o'clock. Yeah, I, I figure that you. Should <laughs> I was looking. I was like, I want to stay though. I'll be there. <laughs> I, so we have. I've actually. I really enjoy this part of that. Um since we're completely new to Instagram, we're new to business, we're new to everything about yeah. it. It's so nice to kind of jump on and meet other people that are yeah. like doing their thing, like you're doing your podcast. I wanted to ask you about yeah. that as well. Yeah. Like, how did you start? Did you do a course? How did you start with a podcast? Do you have a mentor? I have not done a course. Should we do a podcast, invite her? We do a po- about- podcast about inviting people that starting their own thing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So honestly, I have not done a podcast ever before so a year ago I did Instagram live um Mm. and that was sort of like a trial to see what it was like um and sort of along the same basis but not as sort of uh structured yeah Um, I mean a podcast is super because I mean I'm I'm studying at the moment I study video journalism so I'm or video so I'm studying being behind the camera, asking all the questions, and making the story yeah. without being seen. That's kind yeah. of a podcast as well. Yeah. You end up there and you want to not make too much noise yourself, but you want to get as much value out of it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And I, I think I have got, I would say I've got a mentor um, in terms of, so I haven't done a course. Um, I haven't done a podcast before until now, um, but I have been on a podcast before, which was the Age of Plastic Mm -hmm. one with a lovely lady called Andrea Fox. And she's got two podcasts and she's a radio presenter. And I kind of just hit the jackpot because she she was so, so lovely. Um, That's probably a really English phrase, actually. (laughs) Hit the jackpot. Um, She's really, really lovely. And I asked her, are you happy for me to ask questions? And straight up, she was just like, honestly ask me everything and anything you need to and um, she oh, has so been fun. like this mentor that was just so willing to give advice because she said I wish I knew the stuff that she knows now and had someone telling her because there's certain things like for example like doing bulk recordings so that you're not recording for the whole entire yeah. year um and like it's supposed to be fun and it's supposed to be really enjoyable and that's like supposed to be the main part of it um and then like I've been navigating ways that I can provide podcasts for free so they're accessible but then also is there a way that I can make some sort of like income from it um yeah if it's just slightly as another revenue through into Stitcher um so so yeah so I've never done a podcast before but she's an amazing mentor um and through her I would definitely be able to I feel like I'd be able to help you guys and tell you what she's told me um but I have got a um a performance in theatre and acting background so Mm. um I trained like all through school all through college and all through uni and performance um so for me it is it's maybe easier than what it is for some people like with um sort of like hearing yourself and talking and and thinking yeah. on the spot. and like I noticed yesterday for example when I was doing a podcast with this really really lovely couple and I was like oh oh there's still like I feel like there's still more time that I could chat so then I was thinking of like oh actually what else do I want to ask and I would ask that as well so it's thinking on the spot as well which in acting we call improvisation so yeah so, so that is actually one I'm just going to jump in between you because That's um right. I'm really really good at what's it called when someone's speaking interrupting and interrupting <laughs> oh me too. I'm extremely I'm good really at interrupting good at I'm sorry <laughs> I'm an expert wow. at interrupting because I want to be a part of it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I get excited and I think I'm gonna forget something so I'm like oh I'm, like, I'm, just, I'm, just, gonna, I'm just gonna jump in here and just yeah. say something and then you can keep going. Um, so since I I never wanted to pursue a career in journalism or interviewing or anything but then I got into this course at uni and uni's free in Sweden and I wanted to get into a course of video editing but I didn't so I got into a video editing journalist course and I'm like okay I'll just roll with it yeah I'll just I'll study the journalism as well as the video editing editing so at least I get something out of it yeah yeah and so I did and I did a lot I I got a lot out of it but also 
into you in techniques. Oh, I since, see. Since I'm studying at the moment, all I'm thinking about is how to interview people, what to ask, how yeah. it works. Think, as you say, um, improvising, yeah. thinking about the next question, picking up what we're talking about. And you did a fantastic job. Oh, thank you. Like, you literally thank just you. like, that's why I'm asking, do you have a journalist background? Because oh. you're picking up every everything that we were talking about and yeah. spinning off on those questions and making sure that we're heard yeah and you're, and then at the same time you switch direction it's like oh well back to tiny living now so yeah that, like, you're doing yeah. a fantastic job oh thank like, it's you really good thank from you. everything that i've learned in the last six months studying yeah. into you and techniques oh That's thank good. you you're very lovely like you see, you're so natural yeah it's just oh thank you not to catch on and i'm usually like the more quiet one yeah like yeah you might have noticed. yeah you might have noticed that i'm, I'm uh, the chatty one, <laughs> one. and sometimes she squeezes me it's like you should speak you should yeah. speak <laughs> you go and now. I, that, I, like, I try to you speak go. and i like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> you're like oh no it's my turn <laughs> yeah. I think it's really I think that's really important like maybe it's me playing to my strengths but I think it's so important that like whenever I'm doing these podcasts I want people to feel like it's just a chat and it's just really yeah. relaxed and chilled and and yeah just a conversation um yeah I think sometimes you can get different types of podcasts I know that you can get different types of podcasts but I know that when I did the podcast that I did with the lady who I said about it was like that like I came off and I felt like we didn't have a video so I was just talking to her like just yeah. through sound um yeah and she was like just imagine that I've brushed my hair and I've got a really cool outfit on I was like, okay <laughs> I was like I don't know what this lady looks like but it was really nice because like she she was really chatty but really just easy to talk to was she english pardon was she english pardon yeah she was she oh, was well, you guys are yes great so uh, polite well, <laughs> we're no. too polite i'm too polite sometimes <laughs> well i mean like put two british people in the same room and they'll never shut up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just keep talking. Oh, Irish people are worse. Well, oh, yeah. They're from the UK, aren't they? Oh, yeah. They are. Irish people. No, no, Irish people are not from the UK. Northern Ireland is, but not the sub like the yeah. Ireland. Oh, yeah, there's the two. Is it reversed? Yeah. It's, no, it's. No, Northern Ireland. Wait. Northern, Northern Ireland. Ireland. Northern, Northern Ireland, Ireland is part, part of the UK. UK. Yeah. Yes. And in Southern and Ireland, Ireland is not. Mm. Yeah. So they're having a massive fight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They have a massive fight now, actually. They yeah, always like, you have big fights. Yeah, they always have always having their fun <laughs> always <laughs> yeah no they are they are definitely always but yeah no I think sometimes we can be too polite though but I always laugh because sometimes like we'll be in the street walking and then someone will like like you know when you like bump into someone I mean at the moment yeah. we don't because we try and do our social distancing oh, but yeah. we used to bump into someone and for some reason English people always say sorry when someone else bumped into them it was obviously so it was like, fault. yeah like, it was like oh sorry I'm like have a minute I didn't even bump into you <laughs> I was like what's going on but yeah oh I think God, I are so, so rude are they are they really yeah. like really abrupt I think Americans are so rude oh they're they're that. even more rude but <laughs> sweets are rude but sweets don't really bump into each other like, <laughs> no see I was told this about Swedes but every Swede that I have met has been so nice but have you met them as a traveler meeting travelers mm, maybe because, yeah no because there are i know what you mean actually a bunch of us that break <laughs> free from this a bunch of us that break free from the swedish tradition yeah and talk to other people yeah i know exactly what you mean because the guy who i know he lives here actually now and um he's a musician yeah. and he said that he always had he called it like a european sense of humor and he said that he was always slightly different to oh, yeah. like his swedish family and friends and like, like not... he knew and he did quite like click but as soon as he was like traveling and then um he's decided to settle in uh, the uk like yeah. his like humor came out but he always he did say that he was like no 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 swedes can be really like i was like i don't yeah. know if i met this he was like no no it's because you've met the other three you've you've met everybody that's broken free from the swedish. yeah, yeah. you want to see like how Swedes really are, then try public transport. 
Oh public transport. God. Public There's transport a bus in Sweden. Like this. There will be one person on each side sitting all the way down hey, just, just, until just they're forced thing. to sit next to each other. Yeah, but really? That's kind of, just like a simple yeah. thing. If I walk up to someone at a bus station asking for direction, they will first ignore me, second try to answer my question really that's crazy that sounds like london so london is known for that like you don't look at someone in london and people yeah, don't use eye contact eye. they don't smile or anything and that's why loads of people from london come on holiday to cornwall because in cornwall it's the total opposite everyone is friendly like everybody talks to each other strangers say good morning (laughs) like i'm used to that because i'm from a small society but like if you walk into a bar if you're foreign and you're in sweden and you're like oh i'm a traveler let's meet some friends you can do that in every part of the world like if i'm in if i'm in england or when i've i haven't been to england but i've been to ireland yeah and i walked into a bar and i was like yeah i'm gonna meet some strangers yeah five minutes and you meet some strangers that are nice yeah in sweden it will probably take you five weeks (laughs) Like oh. not even no, but there's so many students coming to Sweden in Gothenburg. Con- constantly thinking, how yeah. am I going to meet people? How yeah. am I actually going to meet friends here? Because Swedes just don't meet randoms at randoms. I know a special trick. What What's say hi? Trick? What's the trick? <laughs> you buy them booze. Oh, ah. Yeah. You will be the most popular guy know. at the table you at all times. You can ah. also be the weirdest guy. <laughs> They'd be like, why is she buying me all of this? <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know what? I'm going to call it for you so you can have dinner. Oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. I could, I want to come and chat to you guys. Well, I will remind me if there's anything that I said, I'd send a link to you guys. Remind I don't remember that. You know, if it pings to my head, <laughs> I'll remember. There's I think no maybe cash. it might have been the Gander Boys and things like that. I'll send, yeah. I'll, I'll remember when I'm in. Maybe before I'm in bed tonight, <laughs> I will send that over to you guys. Um, but thank you so much for chatting. It's really, really nice. Yeah, to you too. You Hopefully Have a great night. Meet you guys soon. Um, and yeah, yeah, I'll chat up Hope to you guys on the road. Yeah, definitely. All right, yeah. take care. Bye. Take care, sleep well. Bye. Bye.